Your hands together. Come on. Hey. Let's go. The Lord our God is King of Israel. The Lord our God is mighty. He's full of grace and mercy. Aha! He's given us his son in my new world. Atonement for of our sins. A gift to set us all free. So let there be praise. Let there be praise. With all of my heart, I will lift my voice, and to you I will sing. Let's go together. The Lord our God is King of Israel. The Lord our God is mighty. He's full of grace and mercy. He's given us His Son. Sing. He's given us His Son, Emmanuel. Atonement for our sins. It is a gift to set us all free. Sing so let there be praise. Let there be praise. With all of my heart, I will lift my voice, and to you I will sing. Raise your voice. Waiting, I go give to you. For me, you carry my matter for your head. I can see you. See the way you love me, Jesus. See the way you care for me. You carry my matter for your head. Like a little baby. You know they play with me. You know they carry me. They play. Like a little baby. Jesus, you watch over me. You know they carry me. They play. Raise your voice. If I had ten thousand tons, it still wouldn't be enough to give you praise, to bless your name.
put those hands together for Jesus, and you may please be comfortably seated. Shortly, we will up, stand on our feet to give God quality thanks. When we rise, we shall be thanking God in this manner, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the supernatural impact of your world at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive conferences. Hallelujah. We take our bearing from Psalm 115, verse 1, and it says, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and thy true sake. With that scripture in mind, let's rise on our feet as we lift our voice in appreciation, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the supernatural impact of your word at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences. Lord, we are saying thank you for the supernatural impact of your word at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences. Lord, we give you glory and praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the supernatural impact of your world at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences. Lord, we lay it to heart this morning to appreciate thee. We have returned like that one leper, and we have come with a loud voice to give you glory. We are saying thank you for the supernatural impact of your world at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences. We give you glory. We give you praise. We are not taking your ass in our midst, oh God, for granted. That is why we have come to say thank you. Lord, we lay it to heart to appreciate thee. Receive all that praise. Take all that glory. We give you glory and honor for the supernatural impact of your world at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences. Receive all praise and glory. Lord, not unto us, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and thy true sake. Ensure that God is hearing your voice of thanksgiving this morning. Ensure that your voice is raised on high. Give God praise. Give him thanks. Lord, we are saying thank you. Thank you, Jesus for the supernatural impact of your world at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences. We glorify your name. We exalt thy name, Jehovah. Receive all the praise. Take all the glory. Jesus, we say thank you for the supernatural impact of the world. O King of glory, at all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences, we are here to celebrate your faithfulness. We want to say thank you. Lord, we appreciate thee. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. We have done us well. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we bless and exalt thy name. Take all that glory and praise. Lift your voice and give God thanks qualitatively. He deserves our thanksgiving. He demands it and he delights in it. So lift your voice. Give him thanks on a conscious frequency. Appreciate him. Lord, we are saying thank you. We give you praise and glory for the supernatural impact of the world and all the past editions of the Easter Youth Alive Conferences. We have returned to say thank you. We have returned to give you glory. Receive all our praise and take all that glory. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, so give it to him. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate your faithfulness. We are not taking you for granted. That is why we are saying thank you. Take all that glory. Take all that praise. Lord, we magnify your name. Thank you for the supernatural impact of your world in the past editions of the Youth Alive Conferences. Take all that glory and praise. Now lift your voice. You are giving thanks in the Holy Ghost. You are giving thanks in your understanding. The Bible says, He that given thanks in the Spirit, give it thanks well. So let's do it well right now as we give God thanks in the Spirit. Lord God, receive all praise. Li haba santa mori kari santa li bobo santa. Li haba santa mori kari santa li bobo santa. Li santa li bobo Li haba santa mori kari santa li bobo santa. Lord, we bless your name. Take all that glory. Take all that praise. We magnify and adore your name. Wave those hands and begin to appreciate him. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for the supernatural impact of the world and the past editions of the Easter Easter Life Conferences. We say thank you. Take all that glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty, matchless name, we have given God thanks. Put those hands up for Jesus and you may please be comfortably seated. Next, we shall be rising up, and if we rise, we will pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, make this year Easter Youth Alive Conference a mountain of renewal indeed, resulting in the emergence of Savior that will take their world by storm. Obadiah 1, 17, 21. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of his Jacob shall possess their possession. Let's rise on our feet as we lift up our voice, saying, Father, 
in the name of Jesus, make this year Easter Youth Alive Conference a mountain of renewal in the earth, resulting in the emergence of Savior that will take their world by storm. Father, in the name of Jesus, make this year Easter Youth Alive Conference a mountain of renewal in the earth, resulting of renewal in Teya, ma anga bralosh keteya, buria kata tamahan, ma engo bralosh kata, lega bralosh kebeda, vadi kapa adi, vadi amahan tosh keteya. Father, in the name of Jesus, make this year is the youth a life conference, a mountain of renewal indeed, resulting in the emergence of Savior that will take the world by storm. My dear house keteya ha, ma anga bralosh tatiata, eko bralosh. Thank you, Father. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands, wave it to the Lord and celebrate Him. Please put your hands together and have your seat. Somebody that is ready for encounter of renewal, scream a loud Hosanna! It is with Jesus' joy this morning that we shall be welcoming ourselves to this mountain of encounter of renewal testimony. Please turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, welcome for your renewal. 
that your voice is not yet on this ground. I said, tell your neighbor, welcome for your renewal. But we must understand from the word of God, from Romans chapter 12, at verse 1 and 2, the Bible here began to give us a sense of direction that is going to prepare each and every one of us upon this ground this morning. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. It said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Number one, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable sacrifice. And verse 2 is where our focus this morning is. And it said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I pray for you and I upon this mountain, we shall return as renewed entities. If you are the one I'm talking to this morning, let your amen be the loudest. But before any vessel can be renewed, that vessel must know and desire renewal. Moses ran from Egypt. The same place he was to bring deliverance, he ran from the same place. And journeyed in the wilderness for a period of 40 years until he encountered God in Exodus chapter 3. If you begin to read from verse 1 to verse 10. And as he kept the flock of his father-in-law, the Lord appeared unto him in the burning flame. And Moses said unto himself, let me turn aside to behold this great wonder. I pray for somebody at your own encounter moment, may your eyes be open. Somebody say, believe in amen. Encounters are not accidental experiences. They are things you and I must focus on to see. Moses said, let me turn aside to see this great wonder. And the moment he turned aside, the voice of the Lord came out of the burning flame. And there an encounter was bettered. The same man that was running from Pharaoh ran to Pharaoh once more. I pray for somebody today. The things that you have been afraid of, as you return from this mountain of renewal, those things shall be afraid of you. If you are the one I'm talking to, let your amen be like a youth. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 22. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 22. The Bible said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. You can't be on this ground and be thinking of your friend you left at home. You can't be on this ground and be thinking of something else. May you not miss your encounter moment. I say may you not miss your encounter moment. And we saw that God spoke out from the fire. And the word of God began to ask us, it's not my word like fire. God is willing to renew you and I from patterns and from addictions. It's not my word like fire. This morning, sections of the word shall be coming. And they shall be coming like blazing fire. And that blazing fire shall begin to renew you and I. I thought I'm talking to somebody this morning. I said I thought I'm talking to you this morning. And that word like, like it's like, that is like fire shall begin to burn off every chaff in our life. And suddenly addiction will be broken. And suddenly addiction to pornography shall be shattered. I thought I'm talking to somebody this morning. And suddenly addiction to courtism shall be shattered. But remember, like the man at the beautiful gate, his expectation was alive. And when Peter said, look on us, he fixed his eyes. As you fix your eyes upon this altar of encounter, I want to assure you, you and I are returning as renewed entities. And suddenly, global giants, the kind the world have never recorded, as have been declared by our Father, shall emerge from this conference this year. If you are the one I'm talking to, let your amen be the loudest. Therefore, lift your hand in your sister position and receive grace this morning. Father, I receive grace to remain focused that my expectation shall not pass me by. I will not return the same way from this mountain. I will return as a savior to my world. Father, we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Jam your hands together for Jesus as we receive Hallelujah. the Levites Hallelujah. in praise. To be in his presence, joyfully rise up. I call you Ebu Bedike, Jehovah Jairi, Ebu Bedike. I call you Ebu Bedike, Onyendembemba, Ebu Bedike. 
I call you Ebu Bedike, you see you can do Ebu Bedike. I call you Ebu Bedike, one day they be my Ebu Bedike. I call you Ebu Bedike, one day na God ya Ebu Bedike. I call you Ebu Bedike, one day they nye go Ebu Bedike. Oh yeah, somebody call. 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 I call you Ebu Bedike, oh ne ne ni Ebu Bedike. Oh yeah, somebody call, somebody call, somebody call, somebody call, somebody call, somebody call. Who bring the dosi we move somebody by? We must have met in Baye. One more time. We must have met in Baye. 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 Here we go. We must have met in Baye. 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 Oh, we got toy. Oh, we got toy. Oh, we got day. 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 Why a papa don't suck it? Are you sure? Are you sure? Come on, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, boy. Is somebody taking it for Jesus? Listen, ah.
You are excited to be in EAC 2024. Come on, give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Youth alive, rising giants that can be more youthful. Youth alive, rising giants. Raise your hands to heaven, everyone, everywhere. As together we magnify the name of the Lord, giving him glory, giving him praise for the privilege he has given to us to appear before him on this mountain of renewal. Raise your hands to heaven. Raise your voices to him. And let us give God quality thanks for the encounters that he has prepared and reserved for us upon this mountain of renewal. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Now begin to express your expectations and your desires before the Lord. I am upon this mountain of renewal for my own change of story. I am upon this mountain for my own encounter with you, O oh God. Send me your word, even in this session this morning. Send me your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. In the name of Jesus the Christ, raise your hand. Express your desires. Express your expectation. I want to see what you are saying this morning. I not only want to hear, open my eyes to see that which you have for me today. In the name of Jesus the Christ, open down my eyes. In the name of Jesus. Now let us give him thanks and let us give him praise. Let us appreciate him. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name in Jesus precious name we have given thanks. It shall be your own mountain of renewal indeed. Upon this mountain, God will open your eyes to see. In the name of Jesus the Christ. One more time, raise your hand, give him glory and praise, give him thanks, appreciate him. Now give the Lord a big, big clap of praise. You can make it better and stronger for Jesus. You may please be comfortably seated. Please, you have a testimony to share with God's people this morning. Make your way to the honor entrance and you'll be given opportunity in the course of the service to share that testimony. The honor entrance is the entrance just behind where the pastors are seated. Everyone with a testimony, please make your way to the honor entrance. It will be documented and in the course of the service, you'll be given opportunity to share your testimony. Praise the Lord. I count it a great privilege this morning, given by God and his servant, our father in the faith, the apostle over this great commission, Bishop David Edipo, to bring us the word of life this morning. I'd like to also acknowledge and appreciate our dearest resident pastor, Pastor David Edipo, Jr., for this privilege, and of course, our national youth pastor, Pastor Steve Oga, shall we give the Lord a big, big clap of praise. We are looking at unveiling the power of life. Unveiling the power of life. And I'd like to call our attention to Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. For the annexed expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. The world is waiting. Our generation is waiting. What are we waiting for? The manifestations of the sons of God. But it is important to understand that there is what you must possess and become in order to manifest. If you and I, we are going to manifest our heritage as sons and daughters of God. There is what we must possess and become. 
in order to manifest this heritage. Our world is waiting. Our generation is waiting. In the words of our father, in the faith, Bishop David Ereko, he said, the days of our youth are the days of our greatest opportunity. Opportunity to equip ourselves. Opportunity to generate enough ground power required for utmost life. It is time for you and I to rise. It is our season. We are agents of change. We are agents of rescue. We must rise and manifest the destiny that God has ordained for us. But for this to happen, we must possess light. We must acquire light. We must retain this light. And we must function in the light. We must possess light. We must retain the light. And we must function in the light. It takes light to rise. It takes light to shine. It takes light to manifest. Isaiah chapter 60, beginning from verse 1, he said, Arise and shine, for your light is come. No light, no rising. If your destiny and my destiny must break free from obscurity, then we must possess light. It takes light to shine. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Even though darkness may cover the earth and grow darkness the people, the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to your light. And the kings to the brightness of your rising. Someone who is receiving that is saying amen already. Amen. We need light to rise. We need light to shine. We need light to manifest. And the word of God is the fountain of light. The word of God is the fountain of life. In Psalm 119 and verse 130, the Bible tells us that the entrance of thy words giveth light and giveth understanding unto the simple. The entrance of thy word giveth light. In the word is light. In the word is light. You want to rise? You want to shine? You want to manifest your glorious heritage? Then you must possess the light in the world. In John chapter 1, beginning from verse 1, it talks about in the beginning was the world and the world was with God and the world was God. By him we are all things made. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And this life is the light of man. And the word of God is the light that you and I need to rise, to shine, and manifest our glorious heritage. He sent a word into Jacob. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8. And that word lighted upon the whole of Israel. We live in a world of darkness, but it takes light to dispel this darkness. In Psalm chapter 72 and verse 20, it says, Psalm 74 and verse 20, Have respect unto thy covenant, O God, for the dark places of the earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. The dark places of the earth is full of wickedness, full of darkness. Nevertheless, we understand from scriptures that the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. We have had our father reiterate that over and over again. 
For there is a light that shineth in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Where is that light in the world? John chapter 1 and verse 5. It takes light to dispel darkness. Understand, people of God, you don't beg darkness. You confront darkness. You don't negotiate with darkness. You conquer darkness. And how do you do this? By possessing lies. We must possess lies. Stop being afraid of darkness. I remember in those days when we were young, we used to run some errands around the house and around the neighborhood. And there are certain places they send you to at night. As you are approaching certain spots of the street, your heartbeat begins to rise. You begin to mark time and gather enough energy, gather momentum. As soon as you approach that area, you zoom off. Whoop. You get what you want to get. When you are coming, you are approaching again. You also mark time. As soon as you are approaching that place, you take off. Because it is night and there is darkness. But in the afternoon, the same location, the same environment, you walk gallantly across the place, whistling and nodding your head and moving majestically. Why? The difference between the day and the night is light. When light comes, confidence surges forth. When you possess light, you are no more afraid of the forces of darkness. You are no more intimidated by the agents of wickedness. You need light. And in the name of Jesus, for someone under the sound of my voice, wherever you are connected to this service, upon this mountain, God will give you light. In those areas where the enemy has been harassing you, intimidating you, in those situations and circumstances that have made you afraid, the light that will establish your own dominion is coming to you upon this mountain in the name of Jesus. Encounter with life is fundamental to our manifesting our heritage as sons and daughters of God. But it is important to know it is not enough to possess light. We must retain light. The only way to remain triumphant in a world of darkness is to retain light. Retain the light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, the Bible tells us, Thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Who is Christ? The light of the world. Who is Christ? The word personified. The living word of God. The fountain of light. We triumph by light, not by luck. Retain light. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, he said, Let the word of God dwell richly in you. Let the word dwell richly in you. You become a custodian of light. You become a beacon of light. Let the word dwell richly in you. Let the word dwell richly in you. It is important to also mention here, that it is not enough to encounter light. Encounter with light does not change our story, but walking in the light. Walking in the light. Functioning in the light. Walking in the light. John chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus was speaking, and Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He that followeth after me. He that walketh in my steps. He will possess the light of life. Revelation does not guarantee a change of story. But applied revelation. Applied revelation. It is time for us to graduate from just acquiring revelation to engage in the revelations we have received of God. God has said so many things to us. But how many of the things he has said have we engaged with? How many of the things he has said have we done? You cannot command a change 
until you change your approach to the insight that you have received of him. Engaging with the light. Functioning in the light. You not only possess and acquire, you manifest the light. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 14, the Bible says, If thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, and observe to do all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set you up on high above all the nations of the earth. Our oh, father in the faith, I shared with us over and over again how that he had this encounter where God said to him, I have a place for you at the top if you are interested. And he said, yes, Lord, I am interested. Then said he to him, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, don't just know it, do it. Knowledge without application will equal to frustration. You want to see the faithfulness of God. Engage with the things that God has said to you. The things he has said to you in private. The things he has said to you in the open. The things he has said to you in conferences like this. The things he will be saying to you upon this mountain. You want to see renewal. You need obedience of faith. Engaging with the world. You want to see things change. Engage with the world. Your change and my change is in our engaging with the world. Our change is in our obedience of faith. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night and observe to do all that is written therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you shall have good success. You will observe to do. Tell your neighbor, do. Tap somebody and say, do the word, do the word, do the word. Do the word. Engage the word. Do the word. You will observe to do. The difference between the wise and the foolish is obedience of faith. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, Jesus said, He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. It is not enough to write them. It is not enough to memorize them. It is not enough to share them. The power for change is in our doing them. He that heareth these saints of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew, beat upon that house, and it fell not. Why? It was founded upon the rock. Our change of story it's in applied revelation. Applied revelation. So the word of the Lord will be coming to us upon this mountain in torrents. Brace up yourself. Wake up from your slumber. Stop making excuses. Stop looking for who to blame. Take responsibility. Engage with the world. And you will see the faithfulness of God. It is time for the giants of the kingdom to emerge. And I have no doubt in my heart that upon this mountain of renewal, giants are rising. The giants in you and I is coming alive. The ones who believe it are saying a stronger and better amen. The authority of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. The authority of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 and 29, we see Jesus. When he was come into the country of the gatherings, they met him to possess with the devil coming out of the tomb, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by the way. And what happened? They behold and cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God, as thou come to torment us before the time? Who is this Jesus? The light of lights. The light of lights. It is light that makes you a terror to the kingdom of darkness. It is light that makes you a tormentor of the forces of wickedness. In the name of Jesus the Christ, for you and I upon this mountain, our own light is breaking forth. Let me hear a youthful amen. I said upon this mountain, our light has broken forth. Light 
makes you a terror to darkness and its agents. We see in Luke chapter 4, verse 33 to 36, the same thing. Jesus appearing and the one with the unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice. Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, how thou come to destroy us? I know thee. I know who thou art. Thou art the Holy One of God. It is light that gives you an identity in the kingdom. Not only in the kingdom of God, but also in the kingdom of darkness. We know you. We can see the light. No matter the darkness in an area, when you put up a light from afar, you see the light. In fact, the thicker the darkness, the greater the glory and the beauty of the light. I'm praying for someone here upon this mountain. You will not only possess light, you will become light personified. That everywhere you appear, the forces of wickedness will give way. Light never struggles to subdue darkness. We see that in John chapter 1 and verse 5. Light never struggles to subdue darkness. There is no degree of darkness that can resist the authority of light. Even though great darkness may cover the earth, the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to the brightness of your light and the kings to your rising. Someone say an amen to it if you receive it. That is you God is talking about. Understand that anointing cannot dislodge darkness, only light can. Anointing cannot dislodge darkness. Only, the only cure to darkness is light. We see God at the beginning in Genesis chapter 1. Beginning from verse 1. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What was the answer to the situation? Let there be light. And light came forth. In the name of Jesus, every darkness around any area of your life and my life, upon this mountain, the light of his word is shattering it. Every darkness of joblessness, darkness of torment in the sleep, darkness of harassment and assaults of the wicked, upon this mountain, the light of the word shatters them in the name of Jesus. Before you depart from this mountain, your own testimony will be in your hand to show. The ones who are receiving it are saying a louder amen. amen. In Acts chapter 19, verses 14 and 15, it tells us the story of the sons of Sceva. How they came before this demoniac and said to him, we adjure you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And then the demon said to them, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. I know these ones as beacons of light. I know these ones as light specified. Who are you? They went out to cast out the devil, but the devil cast them out. Tore their clothes and chased them in nakedness. It is light that gives you and I authority over darkness. It is light that gives us identity. It is light that confers our dominion. And who is this Paul? That the, that the devil said they know? A man of depths of insight. A man of depths of revelation. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning from verse 1 to 5. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning from verse 1 to 5. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me, which was given me to you, what? How that by revelation it made known unto me the mystery as I, as I wrote apt forwards in few words. Whereby you read that you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. If you go to verse 11, verse 8 to 11, it began to expunge further. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. According to the eternal purpose which he has proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. B. 
Believers can only be held captive when they have no light. But the good news is this. For everyone under the sound of my voice upon this mountain, wherever you are, connected to this service, you are returning from here with light. Not only as a possession, but you yourself, light personified. That everywhere you appear, darkness will check out. In Isaiah 5, verse 13, my people are gone into captivity. Why? They have no knowledge. They are honorable men, famished. Why? They have no knowledge. Hosea 4, verse 6, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You cannot possess light and be held hostage by the powers of darkness. In John chapter 8 and verse 32, he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall make you free. We are redeemed as the light of the world. But understand that it takes the entrance of the world to keep our light shining from glory to glory. And for the world to enter you, you must open up your heart. You must open up your heart. You must open up your heart. The entrance of thy word giveth life and giveth understanding unto the symbol. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, he said, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Walking in the light of scriptures is what secures the enviable destiny of the believer. Walking in the light of scriptures. Walking in the light of scriptures. It's what secures the enviable destinies of believers. The truth is one cannot retain light and be molested by the powers of darkness. For someone here today, no more molestation. The last assault you saw in your sleep is the last you would ever see. Let me hear you believe in amen. Let me hear a youthful amen. amen. How much light we retain will be revealed whenever we encounter challenges. It is the challenges that we encounter that actually reveals to us how much light we actually have on our inside. How much light is resident in us. When there is light in a house and there is darkness, all you need to do is turn on the switch. The moment you turn on the switch, what happens to the darkness? It disappears. If you faint in the day of adversity, it is because the intensity of your light is small. So you want to be free from shame? Go for light. Rather than envying those who are shining, go for more light. Go for light. Light engenders access to the following, amongst others. Number one, unlimited breakthroughs. Unlimited breakthroughs. We see in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 9, Peter and his colleagues, they are toyed all night, frustrated, beaten, battered, defeated. And then came Jesus. Lend me your bows. And he gave him his bows. And Jesus gave an instruction to him. Launch your net into the deep. And as soon as he did. Now, proud to the time, he followed that instruction. He said to Jesus, Master, we have toyed all night. We caught nothing. We toyed all night. Nothing works. We are professional fishermen. We understand the protocols. But at thy word, I will let down my nets. And as soon as he did that, his net began to, he caught a great multitude of fishes, his net broke, and his boat began to sink. He had to beckon on others. Engaging with the world guarantees unlimited breakthroughs. Unlimited. Arise, shine, your light has come. No matter what is happening to others, it won't come near you. It is light that guarantees our access to exemption from breakdowns and failures. What is in the lies? Light turns giants out of weaklings. It turns giants 
out of weaklings. Light dissolves timidity. Light dissolves mediocrity. Light. Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. Verse 1 to 16, sorry. Gideon said, I am the least of the least of my father's house. My father's house is the least in Israel. But by that one encounter with light, the giant in him came alive. For someone upon this mountain, the giant in you is coming alive. The ones who are becoming the giants that will manifest to their words are saying a louder, Amen. Amen. Number three, light turns men of valor out of refrats. Light turns men of valor out of refrats. In 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 2, we see this description of these men who came to David. Every one of them in distress, in debt, discontented, they gathered themselves unto David. And David became a captain over them. And they were with him about 400 of these men. Now, having gone through encounters and transformation, in 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 8, the Bible describes these same men that were non-entities. They became the mighty men of David. Men, mighty in battle. From non-entities to mighty men of valor. In the name of Jesus, someone here, your own transformation will happen in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. They have been looking down to you before. Upon your return from this mountain, they will be looking up to you. Amen. Light makes stars out of mediocres. Light makes stars out of mediocres. It is light that transforms us. It is light that changes us. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 22. We see the transformation of Peter. An ordinary fisherman, having been with Jesus, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 13, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned men, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Christ. Light. They had been with the light. What's more? Light makes rich out of purpose. Financial giants are rising from amongst us. I didn't hear you say amen. amen. I said financial giants are rising from amongst us. Amen. Second Corinthians 8 from verse 1 to 5. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 to 5. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of their affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. We had, and you have had it over and over again, the testimony of our father in the faith. How that he hated poverty. And he said to the Lord, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity and went on a hunt for life. Three days upon the mountain. And by the third day, the heaven broke loose and light came forth. And he spawned around and screamed with a loud voice, Yea, I can never be poor. What happened to him? Light entered into him. And today, by the grace of God, we can all testify to the realities of kingdom wealth, not only in his life, but also for us as a commission. In the name of Jesus, upon this mountain, every trace of poverty in your life, in your lineage, shall be terminated. Yeah. Whatever has held any one of us bound in lack and want, upon this mountain, they shall be terminated. Yeah. In your seated position, lift up your hands to heaven, wave it to the Lord, and give him glory and give him praise. If the word of the Lord has come true to you at all in this session, give him thanks for it. Thank him for the light that you have received. Thank him because you are returning from here, not only in possession of light, but as a light bearer unto your generation. Lift up your hands, give him thanks, and give him praise.
for that great light from the throne of grace. Once again, give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. It is testimony time. Let me tell your neighbor my breakthrough time. Let's listen to the following documented testimonies. As, as we do, yours shall be the next in the mighty name of Jesus. Number one, delivered from satanic bondage of evil attitude. I was invited by a close friend to Easter Utah Life Conference 2023. When I was growing up, I lost my dad at a very young age alongside my younger sister. It hurt me so much because I loved my dad and missed them all. I engaged in all negative attitudes as a young girl from watching pornography, which affected my mentality and made me engage in lesbianism, incest, masturbating, and stealing. I came to EAC 2023, gave my life to Christ, and I was so blessed with the topic on overcoming youthful traps. I bless God for this platform the commission has provided for the youth, especially individuals like me. And now I'm free an active member of the church. The testifier is Sister Agbo. Hem, you can make that louder for Jesus. Number two, miracle job via soul winning. I want to give this testimony to the glory of God. On Sunday after the second service, we got a charge while we were preparing for the Easter Utah flame. One of the pastors said that God's servant, Bishop David Edepo said that before the governorship election, we should take advantage of that platform and speak to a soul. On Monday morning, I told my wife that we were heading for soul winning. Lo and behold, we are engaged. On our way, I got a call to send, I got a call to send your CV to me in the course of that soul winning. In the night, I got a text message saying, come to our office at Victoria Island for a chat. I got there today for an interview, and via that instruction, I've been given an appointment. I want to return all the glory to the Lord. Make it bigger for Jesus. Make it bigger for Jesus. Number three, financial breakthrough through kingdom advancement prayers. I've come to testify establish and put the devil to shame with this testimony. I joined this commission in 2016, but after some years, due to my place of work, I was not permitted to attend any EAC. To the glory of God, last year was an answer to my prayer. It was a conference I will never forget in my life. I took the Kingdom Advancement Prayer Bulletin and engaged daily. To the glory of God, my father who is abroad and has found it difficult to send me school fees and accommodation for my university, remembered me this year and paid all that I needed for my studies and my accommodation for one year. I thank God for the impact of year 2023 in my life. The testifier is Sister Ngbeyi. Put those renewed hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're clapping for Jesus, make it louder and better. It is announcement time. Number one, praise the Lord. You are all welcome to this morning's session of 2024 Easter Youth Alive Conference. With the team, Renewal, it shall be a mountain of encounters for everyone in Jesus' name. Number two, good news. EAC 2024 prayer hour starts by 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. All youths are encouraged to use this medium to connect more on the prayer altar for definite renewing encounters at this conference. No one shall return without a testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Number three, praise the Lord. The night session starts by 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please come with someone for an undeniable encounter. Number four, all youths are encouraged to heartily engage in the ongoing soul winning prophetic agenda. Remember, this is a covenant platform to take delivery of our fortune packages this year. 
Expect to be openly rewarded for your spiritual engagement. Five, join other youths on Telegram at Youth Winners Youth Alive for our online prayer chain, timely updates on YAF Matters, ebook sharing, and online training. Six, connect with YAF National through our social media handles at Youth Alive Global for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Trends, and Instagram. Put those wonderful hands together for Jesus. of hope. Hear what the good master says. Come to me, all who are labored and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Come to Zion and find rest to your weary souls. Did he call us prisoners of hope? But because they still force us to be free, the men are saying we cannot be free. Then let's ask him. Evangelist, did you say we can be free? Oh yes, you can be free. Because he who the son sets free will and can be free indeed, if only he believes. Come with me to Zion, the city of the good master. On behalf of the good master, I, the preacher, welcome you all to Zion. Now tell me, who are you? We are prisoners and faithfully serving the desires of our grand master. We walk in the, the lust of the flesh, pride of this life, live in sin and feed on lies. Whatever, Whatever he says, we will, will and must do. Not anymore. Because that is not what you are created to be. Your ransom has been paid. And now you can be free. He wants to use us. Let's live at once. Now repeat after me in faith. I belong to the good master. And I, to the good master. And I am free. And I am free. As from this day, as from this day, I covenant to follow the good master. I covenant to follow the good master. And to advance his kingdom. And to advance his kingdom. As long as I live. No, my friend. Indeed, you made the declaration, but you refused to say the most vital part of it. Now, if truly you want to be free, repeat after me in faith. I will serve his purpose and advance his kingdom as long as I live. Oh, 
for me. I don't believe a simple decision to serve. Can solve all my many problems. Although, I don't like this, uh, this life of suffering. Shame and fear. If only I was born in a donut. All I need to do now is to jack my Once I jack my head, forget all this problem. Listen to me, friend. That simple belief is the key to your ordained liberty. And until one is fully ready to serve the interests of the kingdom of the good master, his liberty is not fully restored. No. I know myself. Oh. I know my problem. My problem now is to jack If only I stay in the woods or I live in the sky. Forget I earn in dollars. Eh? When I jack all this problem will not be there. For I saw me. I don't have time. I'm a very busy person. My interest is on there. Before the interest of his kingdom. You see I me. don't have time. You see me. I advance myself before advancing the kingdom. No. Myself no. is even to jack my hand. What's in jack my Listen to me, everyone. I don't know about you, but I am tired of these bodies, pains, addiction, torment, years, and old ages. If a decision to serve the interest of the good masters guarantee my liberty, I am ready. We have tarried too long, serving our hatred, pursuing after our loss, and yet, we are not fulfilled and free. Today, the good masters offers me, everyone hearing my voice, the very jackpot of life to liberty from all oppressions and shames. A wise preacher once said, we do not beg to be blessed. We serve to be blessed. We do not beg to be promoted. We serve our way to promotion. The good master is not looking for who to enslave. He's looking for who to enthrone. The good master is not looking for who to use. He's looking for who to bless. I go to you, dear prisoners of hope, choose today whose interest you will serve. Yours, yourself, or the interest of the good masters. Praise the Lord. Reigning in majesty, Babawa, Kabiesi, Alapanlao, Heinikon, Lamoloba. You are greater than what they say. Demons tremble when we call your name. Your bread made a man out of clay. You are the way. Oh, you are in the go, devil. You don't lost. Oh, you are in the go. In the go. Oh, you are in the go, devil. You don't lost. Oh, you are in the go. Praise the Lord. Nation. Reigning majesty, Baba, Kabi, Yesi, Allah, Panlao, Eni, Nikola, Moldova, Olubala, Eni, Loba. You are greater than what they say. Demons tremble when we call your name. Your bread made in my heart of clay. Olubala, you are you. Oh, yeah, red nigga, that would eat on lost. Oh, yeah, red nigga. You are the greatest in your presence. All the gods are underrated. Kabiya or C, Kabiya C means nobody like him. But don't fight, I have fire. I like by that, you know. Bamu, bamu, swole, bamu, swole, bamu, go luan, last swole, jamu. Ele go ruri care, but don't trust or you tear. I pass it while no ruri tear. My God, but nobody can tear. All the gods can never tear. It's trembling, but then they tear. Nobody can ever tear. Yeah. Oh, he more, more brighter than some more. I 
Bunny like Bad Sonny. I want it loud with Sonny. The heavens and the heavens are proud. We're proud to see me for me. The mighty man of valor. Running Jira, there's no one above me. Ah, just a sweat. Scream it loud. When we pray, some will get it down. And we dance to make it warm. Inside the season, nobody down. Ah, Tapia, Osio, Casa, Casa. Let's get it. Every JJ. I like my life to Sole. I get up with Sole. Go with the stage. Yeah, man. Ah, go to Balado, Jeff. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, if that shout is for Jesus, let's make it loud. Come on, come on, come on. You can make it louder this morning. Clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, come on, youth in the house this morning. Clap your hands, all ye people, and give Jesus a shout. A shout. Thank you, Lord. Well, I believe I'm here for Easter Youth Alive Conference. There are youths in the house this morning. Come on, let's do some exercise. Are there youths in the house this morning? Come on, let's do some shouting and some jumping right now. Come on, come on, come on. Let's do some jumping and some shouting. Get excited in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I've spoken to you young men because you are strong. One of the core characteristics of youth is strength. When you get to a youth meeting, it shows by the vibrancy, by the energy, by the shoutings, by the clappings. Thank you, precious Father. Well, for somebody here, you will live to remember this encounter. You are shouting amen, shouting like a true believer. Heavenly Father, again this morning, we just thank you. Thank you for this privilege to be gathered on this mountain of EAC 2024. You have called it renewal. Let the prophetic theme for this event answer in the life of every youth here. Let no one return the same way we have come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone receiving the biggest testimony, shout the loudest, amen. amen. Now, before you get seated, help me high five at least two people. Tell them something good will happen to you today. Come on, do that quickly. Something good will happen to you today. Amen. Now, declare to yourself something good. Come on, shout it louder. Something good. The loudest you can, something good will happen to me when is that give jesus a big 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 hand and be seated hallelujah well it's my joy this morning to one more time welcome each and every one of us to our easter youth alive conference for the year 2024 and it's my earnest prayer that everything that heaven has packaged, reserved, tagged your name on, will locate you on this mountain. You are shouting amen, shouting like a believer. I appreciate the privilege given to me by God's servant, our Father. And I'll be bringing quickly the second teaching in this morning session. And I recognize the resident pastors seated with us and all other pastors in the house. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand of praise. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And this is the anchor text for this conference. I'd like us to read together the loudest we can. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Now let's go one, two. 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It says, be not conformed to the standards of the world, but be ye transformed, transformed by the renewing of your minds. The renewing of your minds. So the process of renewal, which is the anchor of transformation, begins with knowledge. Now stick with me for the next few minutes as we go through this. The process of renewal, which is the anchor of transformation, begins with knowledge. 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 And that's what we have come to acquire on this mountain. Knowledge. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, And have put on the new man. Somebody will leave this mountain as a new man. And watch what it says, which is renewed in knowledge. So the more knowledge you have, the more renewed you become. We have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So God is simply saying, via the revelation of his word, we had a powerful teaching on unveiling the power of light. So via the unveiling of the power of light, we are renewed into the same image. The same image as we were before. The image of him that created us. So listen to this. When we assess knowledge in God's word, we experience transformation in our minds. When we assess knowledge in God's word, we experience transformation in our minds. And that's where we need transformation. Everything that happens on the outside is simply a reflection of what is going on on the inside. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. Ephesians 4, 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's where the walk is. That's where the battle is. For somebody within the sound of my voice, upon the end of this conference, a new you will emerge. You are shouting amen, shouting like a true believer. At the end of this conference, you will begin to think the way God thinks. You will begin to see things the way God sees them. You will begin to act the way God acts. Shout a loud amen if you are a believer here this morning. Very quickly this morning, let's look at the lifespan of light. The lifespan of light. And this is a very unique subject. The lifespan of light. The word lifespan simply refers to, number one, the length of time of functionality. Lifespan simply means the length of time of functionality. It also means the period of potency. Number one, it means the, life, the length of time of functionality. And number two, it means the period of potency. Light in our context now we receive that powerful teaching in the first session simply showing to you and I that light in this context simply refers to the revelation of the word. The revelation of the word. In John chapter 8 and verse 12. John chapter 8 and verse 12. This was Jesus speaking. Now he said, 
I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. For somebody here, you will have no business with darkness anymore. Now, Jesus was simply saying, I am the light of the world. Any man or woman, any youth that follows me shall not walk in darkness anymore. But watch this. That you shall have the light of life. That you shall become a carrier of the light of life. The light of life. So Jesus was simply describing himself as the light of life. He says, anyone that carries me, anyone that walks with me, anyone that has a relationship with me, has a relationship with light. Remember, Jesus and his word are one and the same. In John chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It says, all things were made by God. And without him, God, was not anything made that was made. Watch this. In him or in God was life. And the life became the light of men. And here the good news. And the light shines where? Come on, help me. The light shines where? Say the loudest you can, the light shines where? And darkness comprehended it. Darkness comprehended it not. Darkness cannot understand it. Darkness cannot define it. So anyone that is a carrier of Christ is a carrier of the light of life. But interestingly, it is not enough to carry light or the revelation of the word. Our response to the instructions of scripture is what makes all the difference. Our response, our response to scriptural instructions is what makes all the difference. You check all two scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Every part of scripture you begin to see episodes and pictures of men and women that have become global references, but the underlining characteristic is their prompt response to scriptural instructions. So every scriptural instruction will deliver the most with timely response. Every scriptural instruction, every word from God, every revelation from God, we deliver the most with timely response. And this is where many believers miss it. This is where many youths miss it. Timely response. God has no problem speaking. In fact, the problem is not with God speaking. The problem is with man's response. The problem is not with God speaking. The challenge is with the response that man gives. In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 4, God came to Abraham. And the Lord said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred, and from your father's house, to a land I will show thee. And the Bible says, and it says, I will make of thee a great nation. See all the blessings. He said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. And watch this. You shall be a blessing. That will be somebody's story here. Come on, shout an amen like you're a believer in the house. And I like this. He said, I will bless them that bless thee. And I won't stop there. I will curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall how many families? Come on, how many families? Is that somebody's testimony here? How many families? All families of the earth be blessed. He was simply saying to Abraham, you now have a global destiny. I'm moving you from local to global. There's somebody here upon your return from year 2024. You'll be moving from local to global. 
If you are shouting amen, shout a global amen. amen. And in Genesis 14, the Abraham that left as a local champion has emerged a global entity. From Genesis 14, from verse 14 to 20, he had an army to himself. He could confront a nation. God has transfigured his life, has translated him and changed his story. But what was the secret? Prompt response. Prompt response. Please listen to this. Prompt obedience to scriptural commands is key to change of story. Prompt obedience to scriptural commands is key to change of story. Swift response. On time response. On the spot response. Unfortunately, too many believers are too slow for God. Our response to his commandments, our response to scriptural instructions, too slow, too slow for God. Hear what Paul the Apostle said in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15 and 16. Now Paul said, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and he called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the hidden. Watch what he said. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. I jumped right in. The instruction came. I responded on time. There are too many revelations, too many scriptural instructions that God has given many of us that have gone down the drain. Why? Delayed response. Delayed response. Now, we saw Paul the Apostle. Many of us are familiar with the story of Paul. He was not among the first disciples. Interestingly, Paul never saw Jesus in the flesh. He was alive when Jesus was alive, but he never encountered Christ in the flesh. He came late, but yet he became the number one apostle. Are you hearing what the word is saying? He was so recognized by the kingdom of heaven and even the kingdom of hell that demons could testify, Jesus, I know. They never said Peter, I know. They never said James, I know. But Paul, I know. So we can almost say, Paul began to manifest in the realms of Christ. But what was his secret? Timely response. Timely response. Prompt response. In Acts chapter 14 and verse 11. In fact, the testimony of Paul was so heart thrilling that when the people saw the manifestations of Paul, they lifted up their voices, they testified. The gods, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Men began to testify of Paul. He's not an ordinary man. He's like a god. In fact, the story of Paul is so interesting that even Peter, the leader of the apostles, he said uh, the dimensions of revelation that is given to brother Paul, I don't understand. He's not operating at our frequency. That was the testimony of Paul. But what was the secret of Paul? Timely response. Timely response. He said, immediately, I conferred not with flesh nor blood. I jumped in. Fulfilling the mandate. In Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, from verse 2 to 7. Now, we see the effect of delayed response. Many believers miss out on the blessing, not because there's a devil somewhere, not because there's satanic resistance, but because of delayed response. He said, I sleep, but my heart waked. It is the voice of my beloved knocking, saying, open to me. 
my love, my dove, my own defiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. Quickly, we are going to verse 7. I put, on my, put off my coat. See the response. I put off my coat. How shall I put it on again? Excuses. I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? Too many believers give excuses. And that's why we miss out on the blessings loaded in scriptural instructions. My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door. And he said, my bowels were moved for him. I rose up to open to my beloved. And my hands dropped with mire. And my fingers with sweet smelling mire upon the handles of the lock. Quickly, verse 6. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn. I opened, but my beloved had withdrawn. The revelation had gone. The blessings attached to the instruction had faded away. Please hear this. The kingdom of God is highly competitive. It demands prompt response to make the most of this adventure. It says, what I say to one, I say to all, when you are slow to respond, somebody else takes it over. Has anything happened to you in time past? Maybe an idea that you have been nursing, all of a sudden, you drag and drag and drag, the next thing you hear that somebody has executed it. It has happened to many people. That's how it is in the kingdom. When you drag with kingdom instruction, somebody else takes it. He said, I dragged to open. By the time I opened the door to my beloved, my beloved had withdrawn. And I began to search. He said, my soul failed when I speak. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. Man, no one of us here miss out on the agenda of God for our lives. If you are shouting amen, shout it like a youth. That's why it commands each and every one of us. Seek it the Lord when he's near. Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. So that scripture simply says, there may come a time you may seek him and not find him. There may come a time if you are delayed in responding, that when you respond, it will carry no effect. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. May we all receive grace here this morning to respond swiftly to every command of scriptures. Shout amen like a true believer. So simply put, every revelation from the Lord requires that we dive in. Dive. Every revelation from the Lord requires that we dive in for maximum impact. Dive in. No delay. No excuses. We dive in. In John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 8, we saw a blind man Jesus encountered. And Jesus spat on the floor, made mortar out of it, and he plastered his eyes. Every time I read that scripture, I begin to wonder. Jesus met a man blind, desiring healing. And instead of saying, your eyes be open, he spat on the floor, made clay, and blinded the man the more. Covered his eyes. But here it is. He gave him an instruction. He says, go to the pool called Siloam which is by interpretation, saint. But the man did not stay there analyzing the instruction. The man did not stay there imputing his own analysis. The Bible says he went his way, therefore, and washed as Jesus instructed. And what happened to the man? He came back what? Seeing. His eyes were opened. The blindness disappeared. Prompt response. Prompt response. The revelation of the word may not make sense to your natural mind. 
your path and my path is to obey. That's the difference maker. Many of us will know that oftentimes the instructions that the Lord may give may not make sense to the kind of mind. For instance, in John chapter 2, wine was finished at the wedding at Canaan. And Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. But the mother of Jesus had given an instruction in verse 5. She might have said in her heart, this my son may give you an instruction that may not make sense. But do you want to maximize his presence? Whatever he says to you, what do you do? Do it. Your impute, not necessary. Your perspective, not called for. Just do it. The Bible says the kind of man receiveth not the things of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. Neither can he know them. They are foolishness to him. Because they must be spiritually discerned. When he gives an instruction, your part and my part is to jump in before the potency expires. Please hear this this morning. Every revelation of the word carries a time tag of potency. Every revelation of the word carries a time tag of potency. You don't act, I don't act, it expires. Every revelation of the word carries a time tag of potency. Potency. We must be careful. And please listen to this very carefully. We must be careful not to become victims of what the Bible describes as the Rubenite spirit. The Rubenite spirit. That is the spirit of procrastination. Many young people today are victims of this spirit. Procrastination. Procrastination. Let me speak to that for a few minutes. No matter how great a vision or a divine instruction, when you introduce procrastination, you kill it. Did somebody hear what the word is saying? No matter how great a vision, no matter how great an instruction from God, if you introduce procrastination, you will kill it. Many visions have died. Many divine instructions have fallen to the ground unfulfilled. Not because of a devil, but because of the spirit of procrastination. Hmm. It is what the Bible describes as the Reubenite spirit. Reubenite. I will do it later. I will do it tomorrow. Judge, Judges chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. He said, and the princes of Issachar were Deborah, even Issachar, and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley for the division of Reuben, a tribe in Judah. A tribe in Israel, I beg your pardon. There, there, there were great thoughts of hearts. He said, for the division of, put that scripture back. Why abodest thou? Verse 15. And the princes of Issachar were Deborah and even Issachar and also Barak. Watch this. He said he was sent on foot into the valley. But for the division of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. Should I? Should I not? Shall I? Shall I not? Verse 16. Why abodest thou among the sheepfold? To hear the bleatings of the flock. For the division of Rubens, there were great searchings of heart. Great searchings. Analysis. Many young people today are victims of it. You are studying the word and an instruction comes. You begin to analyze it. An instruction from scripture comes. This is the next step to take. You begin to brood and analyze and decipher which way, which way. Should I, should I not? Shall I, shall I not? 
And before you know, the lifespan, the potency of that revelation is lost. Listen to this this morning. Procrastination is one of the greatest yet most subtle weapon of the enemy. One of the greatest yet subtle, subtle, very soft, unassuming, with many victims. One of the greatest, yes, most subtle weapons of the enemy. What is procrastination? Procrastination is simply putting off something that should be done today till tomorrow. I will do it tomorrow. Maybe next week. Maybe next month. It is simply putting something that should be done today. Putting it for tomorrow. It is a waster of life. And a destroyer of destiny. Procrastination is a waster of life. And a destroyer of destiny. I pray for every one of us here this morning. Join me, lift up your right hands if you are there. The hold of procrastination is destroyed in the life of everyone here. If you are shouting amen, shout it like a true believer. Please hear this. This life is not a dress rehearsal for another one. This life is not that we are not preparing for another. This is the real deal. The time wasted, life wasted, now is wasted. That's why the Bible commands us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, redeem the time. Redeem it. Don't waste it. Be prompt in your response. Be swift in your response. Every revelation from God has a time tag. Every vision from God has a lifespan. May heaven not weep over any one of us here. Come on, shout an amen like a youth. In this kingdom, delay equals decay. In the kingdom of God, delay equals decay. When you begin to delay in response, the vision ends up decayed. I saw recently a quote by someone. He said, success comes to the man who does today what others are thinking of doing tomorrow. Success comes to the man who does today what others are thinking of doing tomorrow. Prompt response. Many times we appropriate the blessings of Abraham to ourselves, even in redemption. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, in the noon, in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. That's good enough. But to assess the blessing of Abraham, we must first do the works of Abraham. The works. The works. And the strength of Abraham was his obedience of faith. Obedience. Every instruction that came, prompt response. Arise, take your only son Isaac and sacrifice him. The Bible said he rose up very early in the morning. All reserved. Genesis 22. Verse 1 to 9 and verse 16 to 18. He rose up very early. Very early. Before Sarah could wake up. And he picked the son he had waited for all his life. And was taking him on a three days adventure to sacrifice him. That's why God swore in verse 16 to 18. He said, by myself have I sworn that in blessing I will bless you. You have done something natural men can't do. You have responded so swiftly natural men can't. By myself have I sworn. I pray for every one youth here today. May God swear a blessing in your direction. Come on, shout an amen like a young person this morning. Unreserved obedience. Delightsome obedience. Faith-filled obedience. That was the lifestyle of Abraham. That's why we began to see up till tomorrow. Blessings in redemption 
still connected to the blessings of Abraham. For somebody here, you'll be a real carrier of the blessings of Abraham. Say a loud amen if you are there. I close here. Prompt obedience is not cheap. It places a huge demand. Obedience and promptly so is not cheap. It places a huge demand. But it is a force of the spirit. It involves being dead to self. And alive only to God. Dead to self. Alive to God. That's what pause the response. You are not thinking of how I feel. If God says it, my path is to line up. If this is the instruction from God, if this is the revelation God is giving to me, my path is to respond swiftly. Why? There's a time tag. Hear this? It's a test. We all must keep passing on a daily basis. And may we all receive grace not to fail in this test. My prayer for every youth in the house this morning, that the grace for prompt response, timely response, unreserved response, excited response, faith-filled response to every scriptural instruction will become your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Jump on your feet, shout a loud amen if you are there. Come on, jump on your feet and shout the loudest amen if you are there. One more time, you are shouting the loudest amen. Your testimony is dropping right now. With your right hand lifted, Heavenly Father, we all receive grace, even this morning, for prompt response to every commandment of scriptures in the name of Jesus Christ. Not one person here will waste his or her own destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. You are shouting the loudest amen. Your testimony is the biggest. Give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. And please be seated. Make it bigger for Jesus. Hallelujah. Very shortly, we'll be rising to pray. We'll be saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all youth in this commission, thereby causing giants in us to rise. I thought I'm hearing the louder hymn. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see vision. Giant, rise with me this morning as we pray, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all youth in this commission, thereby causing giants in us to rise. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice and pray unto God. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all youth in this commission. Thereby causing giant in us to rise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father and our God. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all youth. In this commission. Thereby causing giant in us to rise. Lift up your voice. You are praying for yourself. My Father and my God. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit. Upon all youth in this commission. Thereby causing the giant in us to rise in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Father and our God. In the name of Jesus, let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all youth in this commission. Thereby causing the giant in us to rise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, by the instrumentality of your spirit, Lord, let the giant in every youth, let it rise in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, oh my God, in the name of Jesus, let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all you to this commission, thereby causing the giant in us to rise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same way the giant in David rose after he departed from
from the cave of Adullam. My Father, oh my God, let your spirit be poured upon us from on high. In the name of Jesus Christ, are you praying unto God? My Father, oh my God, in the name of Jesus, let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all youth in this commission in the name of Jesus Christ thereby causing the, the giant in us to rise in the name of Jesus Christ giant in every department of our life in the name of Jesus Christ captain of industry rising by the instrumentality of your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ are you praying unto God don't matter anyone engage your faith engage your heart my father and my God in the name of Jesus let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon all youth thereby causing the giant in us to rise in the name of Jesus Christ giant in ministry. Let it rise, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, academically. Let the giant in us be rising in the name of Jesus Christ. Ale brando sotalia gabalada. Engage your heart, engage your faith, and you are praying unto God. My Father, oh my God, in the name of Jesus, let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ upon every youth of this commission. In the name of Jesus Christ, there are by causing the giant in us to rise in the name of Jesus Christ. No more dwarfness in our life. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray unto God. You can engage your heart. You can engage your spirit. Make sure the heaven is hearing your voice of intercession. Alambrado sotela gabaladala. Ela kotomene tosia. Erotomene galabalagata. Endroto sopeli gatale. Elo brande sotiandalada. Angalambalando sopena. Eko parota let the giant in us rise in the name of Jesus by the mighty outpouring of your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ captain of industry we are rising in the name of Jesus Christ in medical world we are rising in the name of Jesus Christ in agricultural world we are rising in the name of Jesus now lift up your hand begin to be celebrated God give God all the glory Father we say thank you Lord blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Shout a bigger amen. Put your hands together for Jesus and be comfortably seated. We get set to praise God. Hey, 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 my God is good. Oh, my God is good. I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I will dance and sing to you, because you have been my help forever and ever. Hey, hey, hey my God is good, oh. Turn my life around. Praise Jehovah, he has turned my life around. Say, he's turned my life around. He has turned my life around. Praise Jehovah, he has turned my life around. Say, praise Came 
like a flood. Jehovah, you raise the standard against the and please be seated. Someone said for financial transformation, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Right now this morning in this AAC morning session, it is offering time. Somebody say my blessing time. Please quickly package your offering that you have brought to honor the Lord. Let's quickly do that. You are given in cash. Please put it in an envelope. You can also follow the screen if you are given electronically. As we package our offerings, let's read from Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. The scripture says, Give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, press down, shake it together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. And look at the word for with the same measure that ye made, whither it shall be measured to you again. But you are ready to release what you have. You are not ready to receive what you need. Shall we quickly rise to our feet right now as we worship the Lord? Lift your offerings to heaven and Speak to God yourself, giving thanks to God for this privilege as you connect yourself to the covenant of financial prosperity that shall emerge after this renewal conference. Father, I thank you. Give you all the glory and the praise. Thank you for the opportunity to worship. And I believe with my offering, I'm experiencing transformation in my finances. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are grateful for this privilege. We ask that everyone's offering be blessed and everyone experiences a transformation financially in Jesus' precious name. And all the people say louder, amen. amen. Please be seated while we invite the Levite to minister. Somebody give God praise this morning.
For when praises goes up, blessings comes down.
to heaven everybody and let's glorify God from the depth of our hearts for the privilege and blessing he has given to us to be in his presence this morning lift your hand wherever you are across the globe connected this morning to this session of the Easter Youth Alive conference give God the glory let's appreciate him thanking him first for the word that we received in the first session the second word that came to us so powerfully, Lord, thank you for the unveiling of your word. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the adoration. Now begin to ask him to speak directly to you again this morning. I have come today for another word. Speak directly to me today by your word. Let your word transform my life. Let your word change my story. Let your word change my level. Father, thank you for it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, this morning we have come full of gratitude for the privilege and the honor that we have to stand in your presence. Thank you for the blessing of your word that has come our way in each of the first two sessions. Thank you for the diverse ministrations that came to us. Lord, we give you all of the praise. Our eyes are on you this morning asking that you will speak to us again. By your word, let every one of our lives be transformed. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and please, you may be seated in his presence. If that's a youth, I thought you'd be clapping harder for Jesus. You'll be shouting right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. For each one of us, this Easter Youth Alive Conference 2024 will be a mountain of transformation. Amen. If you believe God, say louder, amen. amen. The theme of this Youth Alive Conference is renewal. And like we've been told, the anchor for it is the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. My prayer again is that for each one of us on this mountain, there will be a definite renewal. Amen. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. This morning in this session that I'm privileged to take, we'll be looking at the subject, life is an adventure in visions and revelations. Life is an adventure in visions and revelations. And I want you to follow very closely. We have a lot of ground to cover, and we're going to do that in a few minutes. So we trust the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and light as we go in the name of Jesus Christ. Two vital driving forces in life are the forces of visions and revelations. Paul the Apostle in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1 said, I will come now to visions and revelations of the Lord. According to scriptures, 
Where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Furthermore, there is no transformation without revelation. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, We are with open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. The meaning of those two scriptures is that life becomes frustrating and stagnated where these two forces of vision and revelation are not in play. Because where there is no revelation, there is no transformation. Where there is no vision, there will be frustration. So where there is no vision and there is no revelation, there will be no progression and there will be no fulfillment. The question, therefore, we must begin by addressing is what is vision? Two definitions I want us to pick quickly this morning. Number one is vision in our context is the unveiling of divine plan. The unveiling of divine plan. The unveiling of divine plan. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. The Bible tells us there, it says, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Another translation says to give you a future and a hope. So according to scriptures, God is a God of plans. We know that our God, in fact, in scriptures is a God of times, of seasons, of plans, and of purposes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So God is a God of times, of seasons, of plans, of purposes. This is why the scripture declares that God works all things according to the counsel of his own will. Ephesians 1 and verse 11. The unveiling of this will of God is what we refer to as vision. The unveiling is what we refer to as vision. So when we talk about vision, it is the unpacking, the unveiling of God's plan, God's purpose, God's will for any individual. Ephesians 1 verse 18 tells us that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So there is a need for an unveiling for us to be able to know the hope of his calling, the purpose for which he has brought us. That's what vision is all about. It is the capacity to have access to the plan and purpose of God. Number two, vision is seen into the future that God has ordained for you. Seen into the future. Seen into the future that God has ordained for you. That is vision. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. The Bible tells us, it says, the Lord said to Abraham, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Look north, south, east, and west. For as far as you can see, I will give it unto you. The ability to see into the future is what determines our capacity to apprehend the future or secure the future. So vision is the ability to see into the future. Seeing what God has in store for us. It's important to know that life is not designed to be lived by chance. We are designed to live life on purpose. And to live life on purpose demands that we have access to seeing what the future holds. Now quickly, we have seen what vision is. Let's look at revelation. What is revelation? We look at three definitions very quickly this morning. Number one, revelation is an outbreak of light from the word of God. An outbreak of light from the word of God. John chapter 1 verse 4 and verse 5. He said in him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Who is him that is talking about there? From verse 1 to 3 he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So inside the word there is light. The word of God is the custodian of the light of God. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So revelation is about the outbreak of light. 
the outbreak of light from the word of God. And when we are talking about the outbreak of light, we are talking about the light of God breaking forth inside the spirit of a man. Now take note, in the book of Psalm 119 and verse, um, Psalm 119 and verse 130, the Bible says that the entrance of his word giveth light. So the light we are talking about is an internal illumination, an internal illumination that comes into our spirit man as we engage with the word of God. When a man or woman is lighted by the word, that individual ends up becoming a wonder to the world. There is an illumination that takes place from within. Light strikes. And we heard much of that in the first teaching. When we talk about the outbreak of light, that's what we refer to as revelation. Number two, revelation is the opening of our eyes to the mysteries of scriptures. The opening of our eyes to the mysteries of scriptures. The Bible says, open thou, he said, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Psalm 119 and verse 18. Open my eyes. The opening of our eyes to the mysteries of the word. That's what we call revelation. Number three, revelation is the opening of our understanding to the deep things of God. The opening of our understanding to the deep things of God. So when we talk about revelation here, we are not talking about having a dream. We are talking about opening of our understanding. We are talking about the opening of our eyes. We are talking about the outbreak of light from the word of God. If you look through scriptures, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, it says, I had not seen, he had not heard, it has not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. He said, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for his spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So, visions has to do with God's plan. Revelation has to do with God's word. And we need God's plan and God's word to make the most of our lives in this world. Vision, God's plan. Revelation, God's word. Those two are, they are indispensable forces in making the most of one's adventure on the earth. Quickly this morning, why visions and revelation? We are going to look at the reasons why visions and revelation becomes vital and important in anyone's adventure. Number one, life's purpose is discovered by vision. Life's purpose is discovered by vision. Listen to me this morning. You are not a biological accident. You are the product of God's intention to execute a specific purpose on the earth. You are not born by mistake. You are on the earth for a specific purpose. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, it said, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you to be a prophet unto nations. So before your conception, there was a completion of God's purpose for your life. But that purpose cannot be fulfilled until it is discovered through the process of vision. So vision is what gives us access to life's purpose. So life's purpose can only be discovered by vision. You don't determine vision, you discover vision. You don't determine it. You don't wake up and decide vision. It is discovered because it came before you were born, before you were conceived. Vision has been completed. Notice that when you look at God, you discover that one of the fundamental characteristics of God is that he will always complete a thing because before he begins it. In the book of Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10, he said, declaring the end from the beginning. He said, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. So vision has to do with the unveiling of of God's purpose or plan. So no one locates the plan without vision. And when the plan is not located, fulfillment cannot be secured. 
to enjoy fulfillment in the adventure of life, you must locate God's plan by vision. Please hear this. The plan of God for your life does not come by association. You may be close to somebody that is going in a particular race or going in a particular way, and that may not be your track. So don't connect with his plan by association. Find it by vision. Vision is what gives you access to life's purpose. Number two, life's pace is facilitated by revelation. The speed at which things occur is facilitated by revelation. You see, the clearer you see, the faster it goes. The clearer you see, the faster you go in the journey of life. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11 and 12. Look at what the Bible says. It said, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will make it quick. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22. The Bible tells us there, it says, one shall become a thousand, it says, and a small one shall become a strong nation, a strong nation, and I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So the pace, the speed of accomplishment in any individual's life is facilitated by revelation. If you want to see results taking place in quick succession, in your life, one of the vital requirements is revelation. That means no revelation, no speed. It is possible for you to have vision and lack speed. There are so many people that have found God's purpose, God's plan for their life, but they lack speed of accomplishment. What opens you and I to speed is clarity of revelation. Number three, life's patience is strengthened by revelation. Life's patience, the ability to sustain one's adventure in patience is strengthened by revelation. Psalm chapter 31 and verse 15. Psalm 31 and verse 15. The Bible says, My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies for they persecute me. My times are in thy hand. My times. I'm not just living life at a rough frequency. My times are in your hand. Don't forget in the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11, he said he makes all things beautiful in his time. So it's lives, you find the patience for the adventure of life comes to you and I via revelation. The more insight you have, the more patient you become in the adventure of life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Number four, life's resilience is anchored by revelation. Resilience. The ability to stay the course in season and out of season is anchored by revelation. Life's resilience. You see, in the journey and adventure of life, there is a need for fortitude, inner toughness, the ability to withstand the various pressures and the various headwinds that come in your direction in the journey of life. And that is facilitated by revelation. God's servant said that he was studying his Bible one morning and suddenly he came across a scripture. And the scripture was simple. He said, look, as far as our adventure in this kingdom is concerned, he said, you will reap a hundredfold with persecution. And he said, as he saw that scripture, if light began to break forth, and he said, the Lord began to show him that you must develop yourself to enjoy persecution. Because in the journey of life, there will be resistances. In the journey of life, there will be various obstacles. And you must develop yourself to enjoy persecution. We live in a world today where many people have become victims of emotional weakness. Every little obstacle that comes their way, they get broken down by it. But one of the vital forces that strengthens us to remain resilient in the face of the battles of life is revelation. 
when a man, a woman, a boy or girl is loaded with revelation, they become resilient in the adventure of life. They are not, they are not, they are not easily cast off, no matter what it is they are confronted with. My prayer for somebody hearing my voice this morning is that from this day onward, I see a fresh release of grace for resilience in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you believe it, say a loud amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say a loud amen. amen. Number five, life's chapters are opened by revelation. The more you see, the more new chapters open to you. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. We all with open face, we behold him as in a glass, the glory of God, and we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So the clearer, the brighter you see the new chapters you find opening on your behalf. For somebody hearing my voice from this year 2024, a new chapter is opening in your life. If you believe it, say the loudest amen. I said a new chapter is opening in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And final number six, life's exploits are energized by revelation. If you are going to command exploits, it takes revelation. Daniel 11.32, those that know their God, the ones that have revelation about their God, are the ones that will do exploits and be strong. So if you are going to command exploits, that is unusual results, it comes practically by revelation. Now, the question we are going to focus on quickly right now is how do you access visions and revelations? How do you gain access to visions and revelations? Now, I give us a few keys this, this morning, and I trust that the Holy Ghost will give us brighter understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Number one is you must be born again. You must be born again. John 3.3, 3, the Bible says, except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Until you belong to God, you can't locate the plan of God. It would take salvation for anyone to gain access to genuine vision. Genuine vision. But number two, I'm going to focus on the next four points. And I trust the Spirit of God to give us light. Number two is you must be in the Spirit. If you are going to gain access to revelation or vision, you must be in the Spirit. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, the Bible says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. I was in the spirit and I heard. For you to pick what God is saying or what God is showing, you must be in the spirit. Now listen carefully. The greatest enemy of our access to anything that is being unveiled to us by God is the flesh. Carnality, that is the greatest enemy. If you don't learn to tame the flesh, you will not be able to obtain what the Spirit is showing. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, the Bible tells us there, First Corinthians 2, 14, it said the natural or the carnal man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. It takes a man, a woman, a boy, a girl in the spirit to gain access to what it is that God is showing. So you must be in the spirit. You must be in the spirit. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Look at what the Bible tells us here. He said, after this, I looked, and behold, the door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, as it were the voice of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. And look at verse 2. And immediately I was in the spirit. So when he was talking about come up hither, he was not talking about a physical ascension to a place. He was talking about being in the spirit. I was in the spirit. Immediately I was in the spirit. If we are going to pick what God is saying, then you and I must learn to be in the spirit. Be in the spirit. That is why whatever it is that chokes or continues to energize our flesh, we must be cautious with it. You find so many people today claiming they want to hear God, but they are feeding the carnal nature and starving the spiritual nature. It takes a charged up spirit man 
to be able to pick what the Spirit is saying. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's so important. So there is a demand for us to ensure that we learn to be in the Spirit. Life is too precious to leave it by chance. And in order to pick what the Spirit is saying, we must learn to be in the Spirit. He said, I w immediately I was in the Spirit. And I was in the Spirit because he said, come up hither. If you are going to pick what the Spirit is saying, then you and I must learn to be in the Spirit. Number three is be meek. Be meek. Meekness talks about humility. Being teachable. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29, Jesus said, Come unto me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, Come and learn of me, because I am meek and I am lowly in heart. If you want to pick what God is showing, there is a need to be meek. Psalm 25 and verse 14. Psalm 25 and verse 14. Let's, uh, verse 9, sorry. Psalm 25 and verse 9. The Bible tells us there, he said, the meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. The meek will he guide. God is only in the habit of talking to the meek. Who is the meek? The humble, the teachable. So pride and arrogance has the capacity to deafen our spiritual hearing. Pride and arrogance. And why is that so many times the things God will say to you may not be the things that you want to hear. They may not be the things that you want to do. For example, you talk about the subject of vision. If you are going to pick what God is saying, you must surrender what you have been thinking. Many of us come to God asking for his plan, but we come to him with our own plan. This is what I want to do. And as a result of that, you find yourself stranded. I've shared this story many times. I remember while as a young boy, I always known the necessity of picking God's purpose. But I had many, many plans that I wanted to do. And over the years, I began to document those plans, record those plans, and began to organize those plans. But I knew that God had a plan for me, but I really wanted my plan to work. So anytime I would come to God, I would say, Lord, show me your plan for my life. Show me your plan for my life. But inside me, I knew that my, the plan for my life is the one I've written down. So I wanted him to just say, my son, my son, what you have written down is correct. Go ahead and follow it. So I will go and I will pray. And once I pray and I don't hear anything, I will go and continue developing my plan. I will continue developing my plan. But I got to a point in life where I discovered that it would be a tragedy to run through the journey of life and conclude the race only to find out that I have not begun. So I went to God for the first time. I remember I heard a story and that story stuck with me. A man came to a particular church and he entered into the church as an, he was very elderly man at that period of time, late 70s. Entered into the church and in the midst of the service, he began to weep profusely. And the pastor saw this elderly man crying. And he said to himself, after the service, I will get this man to find out what's going on. The man, before the service concluded, he stood up and left. The second day, the man came again. And during the service, was weeping profusely. And the pastor thought to himself, after the service, I will pick this man and find out what is wrong. But before the service ended, he stood up and quickly left. So the third day, the pastor asked the ushers, if you see any elderly man who is crying, just hold him for me. So after the service, they heard the man, our pastor wants to see you. And they brought him to the pastor. And he said, sir, I noticed two days ago, you were weeping. Yesterday, you were weeping. Today again, you are weeping. What exactly is wrong? And this man began to tell him how that many years ago, God had called him. He had found what God wanted him to do. And he had called him into the ministry. But he, he didn't want to go into ministry. So he got into business and did very well. Had a lot of money, had a lot of assets. Now was a retired businessman at the twilight of his life. But he entered into that church and as he entered, God opened his eyes to see that the exact plan that he had given to him many years ago, that is the plan of the building that was to be built, was the exact building that he was standing in. So he brought out the paper, old yellow paper, and showed it to the pastor. And the pastor said when he looked at the plan, everything on that paper 
was exactly what was in that building. What was wrong at this time? Why was he weeping? He was ending his life to discover he had not even begun his race. Now listen to me very carefully. Life is a race. And the only way to run your race in life is to find your lane in vision. And until you find your lane in vision, no matter what you seem to attain in life, it will not matter. Now, listen very carefully. This is so important for us to understand this. I remember in secondary school, we used to have, you know, my secondary school, when we were, you know, running track. Our track field didn't have where you, you know, where the fans should sit. So they would sit inside, inside the circle. And when we were running, I remember one day we were running 200 meters race. And we began to run and run and run. And some of us who were inside were running and hailing the other runners. And I discovered one of them who was running was ahead of all of us who were the runners. He got to the finish line first, hailing everybody. But because it was not his race, he had no prize to win. That day I learned a lesson. Everybody is running, but not everybody is winning. You cannot win a race for which heaven has not registered you. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Until you are registered by heaven in a race, no matter how fast you run, you cannot be acclaimed a winner. So winning in the adventure of life is the product of locating your race and running that race. I know there are so many of us with many wonderful plans. Plans of how you feel you can make it in life. Like the person who was here, that prisoner of hope that was saying, look, I know all my problems will be solved simply if I jackpot. That is, if I just jackpot, that is the answer to all my problems. All I need to is, is escape this country and my life will be wonderful. The truth is this. You must come to God in meekness. Because some of us, that's a part we don't even want to hear. If you come to travel, God, don't go there. Travel, leave that side alone. Any other thing you want to say, say. But this country, I must run. I'm by any means possible. They don't want to hear anything else. But listen to me. When it comes to making the most of your life, that's where meekness comes. Recognizing that, look, God knows better than I do. He sees the future clearer than I do. So I must come before him in humility. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. Number four, engage the Holy Spirit in prayer. You want to gain access to visions and revelations. Engage the Holy Spirit in prayer. Engage the Holy Spirit in prayer. John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. The Bible tells us there, it says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. And verse 14, he says, He shall glorify me, for he shall, he shall receive of mine, and he will show it unto you. He will show you things to to come. He will show you things to come. And how do we engage him? We engage him through the platform of prayer. Through the platform of prayer. He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeks finds and to him that knocks the door shall be opened. So we seek him in prayer. Holy Spirit, Show me the plan, the purpose, the agenda that you have for my life. And you do that in meekness and sincerity. Lord, I put my plan aside. I come before you today. Show me what it is that you will have me do. Very important. If you are going to gain access to visions and revelations, you must engage the Holy Spirit in prayer. Finally, number five is you must search the scriptures. You must search the scriptures. The Bible is a book of visions. It unlocks the plan of God, the purpose of God, and the light of God to us. It is a book of visions. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11 and verse 12. The Bible tells us there, it says, And the vision of all is become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. So the Bible is a book of visions. It unveils to us the plan of God, the purpose of God, and the light of God. It is unlocked via it. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, the Bible said, Lo, I come 
in the volume of the book, it is written of me. So that book called the Bible has details to organize your life. It is a code book for profitable living. So commit yourself to searching the scriptures every single day. Get committed to searching the scriptures. When you get committed to searching the scriptures, you begin to find the light of God, the plan of God, unveiled practically in your direction. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And why is this important? Because whatever you claim to have heard in your spirit must be proven by the word. Whatever you claim to have heard in your spirit must be proven by the word. So settle down to search the scriptures. Become an addict for the word of God. Don't live your life carelessly. Make sure your life is guided by the word. Make sure God's word remains a mainstay in your life. This is vital and very critical. Until that becomes the case, you cannot begin to enjoy access to visions and revelations as God has ordained for you. But my prayer this morning is that via the encounter that you are having on this mountain, the seal that has kept you from accessing visions and revelations will be taken off your life. From now, God's plan, God's light, God's direction for your life will be made plain to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe me, say loud amen. I said, somebody believe me, say loud, amen. Yes. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand before the Lord right now. Stand on your feet with me and ask the Lord, Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace to begin to walk in the reality of visions and revelations more than ever before in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray that prayer. Open my eyes. Lord, open my eyes. Open my spiritual eyes that I may begin to see. I may begin to see clearly your plan. Clearly, your purpose. Clearly, your agenda for my life. Lord, open up my eyes. In the name of Jesus, let my eyes be opened supernaturally. I don't want to keep walking in darkness. Open my eyes to see your light. Open my eyes to see your plan. That I will run in the fulfillment of your plan. I will not live my life by chance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, open up my eyes. Lift your voice and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Open up my eyes, Lord. Open up my eyes to see your plan. Open up my eyes to encounter your light in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be made available to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. This mountain for you will be a mountain of visions. Everyone that is yet to have clarity on what God has ordained you for, my prayer is that on this mountain, your spiritual eyes will be open. In the name of Jesus Christ, for everyone that is still groping in darkness, not knowing what step to take, what way to go, this mountain for you will be a mountain of light. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. You believe God, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus deserves a bigger, 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 bigger hand. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say loud, amen. For all of the word sessions we've received this morning, one more time, let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand of praise. Amen. Well, as we close in this morning segment, please take note um, of the following the EAC prayer hour, the prayer hour for our Easter Youth Alive Conference will be holding from 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. 
We are all standing before the Lord and just praying and engaging extensively and fanning the revival fire. Please note that for Covenant University students, it will be holding at the university chapel from 12 to 1.30. While for uh, YAF members here in Canaan land, it will be holding at the youth chapel. So please note um, all of those um, designations. Then for all of our diverse cluster locations across Lagos, you'll be holding them at your venues. Please hang on there from 12 to 1.30 p.m. And then all across our various mission stations here in Nigeria and across the globe, at your various churches or your cluster points, we'll be holding the EAC prayer hour. Praise God. Now, the evening session for today kicks off at 4 p.m. Amen. And it will run from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. It shall be another great time in God's presence. You can't afford to miss any of these sessions. One more time, join me, lift up your hands. And let's just appreciate God for the diverse visitations that we have had since the morning session began. Lift up your voice and give thanks to God. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Magnify his name for the diverse encounters, the diverse visitation. Thank him for the word that he sent in all of the sessions, the first, the second, and the third session this morning. Father, thank you. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Somebody say louder, amen. Let's share the goodness in fellowship. One to go, surely. God's goodness all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Youth alive. Rising giants. God bless you. See you at 12 noon.